Proudly, we hail. Hello from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another performance of Proudly We Hail, a program presented by your War Department. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present Mr. Zachary Scott as the star of our play, A Good Deal, written by Tom Petty, with music by Eddie Skravanek. <laughs> The man coming down the flagstone walk is Jeff Carter, the novelist, home to sell his rundown Virginia estate. Hmm. Something's been going on around here. Hello. I have an idea you're Jeff Carter. Well, I've always thought so myself, but I'm beginning to doubt it. Well, what a funny thing to say. I'm Sally Randolph, Mr. Carter. You know... The last time I visited Green Oaks, the caretaker was an elderly colored man named Sam Winston. My, my, how old Sam has changed. Sam hasn't changed a hair. He's just as lazy as ever. I'm from the real estate office. You telegraphed us to meet you at Green Oaks as you only had a few hours in which to make arrangements. Oh, so you are Miss Randolph Sales and Development Agency Incorporated. Yes. I'm the whole company now that my father's passed on. Well, I've been gone a long time, but I recall the name of Randolph. Didn't your father used to live it's near... It's about time you're waking up, Jeff Carter. That cottage across the road's where he lived. And I still live there. Oh, I remember you. You were a little tyke in pigtails when I left here ten years ago. Well, come on inside and let's get this settled. Are you sure you want to sell Green Oaks, Jeff Carter? Of course. Say, the window's open, everything is spotless, no covers on the furniture. Wait a minute. When did I put this place on the market? Two years ago next month. Old Sam never kept this place like it is today. Is someone already living here? Well, of course not. Why don't you stay here for a week before you sell the place? Oh, that's impossible. I'm leasing a new apartment in New York, and I have a date with a decorator tomorrow night. You do have a buyer, don't you? Yes, I have a buyer. Jeff, why don't you stay at Green Oaks just for one night? You could fly back. Mm, I'm beginning to remember too many things in the few minutes I've been here. You're a writer. Maybe it would help you to remember mm, all of those things. One of those mm, things I'm remembering is that you were a very insistent little girl. Remember how you wanted to ride my pony? <laughs> yes, and I got to ride him, too. <laughs> Won't you stay just one night before you sell Green Oaks? Maybe if there were enough memories... Well, that's strange talk from a real estate agent. Don't you want to make a commission? Not on Green Oaks. Not unless I'm sure. Sure of what, Sally? Sure that you want to sell it. Come on, I'll show you the grounds. I'll bet it's been ten years since you were here. Well, it's been seven, and there are a lot of things I don't understand. The last time I saw Green Oaks, the place had grown up in grass and weeds. The house was run down, and, and now everything is spotless. The flowers blooming, the grass cut, hedges trimmed. Where's old Sam? We'll go find him. Say, those rose hedges are new. They're not two years old. They'll be two years old this winter. And the barns are freshly whitewashed. Now, don't tell me Sam did that on his own. Old oh, Sam's a better worker than you think, Jeff. Maybe Green Oaks means more to old Sam than it does to you. Look, Sally, I'm a writer, not a sentimentalist. I know the Carters have owned Green Oaks for a hundred years. Now I'm the only Carter left. I'd rattle around in a place like this. Now that I've got that off my chest, let's find this caretaker of mine. Uh, I think you'll find him up by the summer house fixing the steps. I don't think it'll be necessary for me to go along. I'll stop at the office. No, no, I'd, I'd rather you stayed with me, Sally. There's something I want to look into, and I'll need your help. Uh, all right, if that's the way you want it. Howdy, Miss Sally. Oh, hello, Sam. Oh, howdy, Mr. Jeff. Miss Sally told me you was coming home today. Sam, you old rascal, what's gotten into you? You've been working. Mr. Jeff, I worked so hard since your pa was alive. I feel like I've almost been working in my sleep. Well, you've done a remarkable job. But I still don't understand it. Oh, shucks, Mr. Jeff. It ain't hard to understand when you know Miss Sally. She's a driving lady. Anyhow, Miss Sally worked hard on me to keep this place looking nice. Oh, now, Sam. Uh-huh. I've been suspecting as much. I'm going to have a word with you, young lady. Thanks, Sam. We'll have our talk later. Yes, sir. Now, Sally, what's it all about? I love Green Oaks, Jeff. 
I guess I've always loved it. When you turned it over to me to sell... Well, I didn't want to sell it. I wanted to fix it up. I... Well, I helped Sam fix it up. You aren't angry, are you, Jeff? Yes, but not with you. I'm going to stay here tonight, Sally, to find out what it is that bothers me. We pause briefly from our story, A Good Deal, starring Zachary Scott as Jeff Carter, to bring you an important message from your War Department. I have a message for all veterans, you men who are wearing that gold discharge button in your lapel. Many of you are finding that civilian life is not everything you expected it to be. Every day, former servicemen are re-enlisting in the Army, and here's why. They know that few jobs in private industry can offer such a high starting wage. Few civilian positions can pay, in addition to free food, clothing, lodging, medical expenses, $75 a month, which is the starting pay for a private in the Army. An ambitious veteran knows that opportunity for advancement in the Army is good. He knows that in addition to his pay, he can get dependency allowances, low-cost insurance, the use of Army PXs, commissaries, and amusement facilities at reduced rates. He knows that after 20 or up to 30 years of service, he may retire on a substantial income at no cost to himself. He knows that the Army is a team of scientifically trained, skilled men who every day contribute to the advancement of culture and human progress. Is it any wonder that so many veterans are taking advantage of the opportunities that the new regular army can give them? Veterans, compare these benefits with those available to you in civilian life. Then go to your nearest army recruiting station and enlist. It's a good bet in any man's league. And now, act two of our story, A Good Deal, starring Zachary Scott as Jeff Carter. A week has passed, and Sam is serving breakfast to the master of Green Oaks. And the master is still Jeff Carter. Morning, Miss Sally. Good morning, Sam. Sally, come on in and have a cup of coffee. Well, thanks, Jeff. I'm afraid I'm a very troublesome client, but I finally made up my mind about selling the house. About time, too. Then you're going to sell? No, Sally. No sale this time, but I'll see that you don't lose your commission. Oh, who cares? I'm so happy that Green Oaks is going to stay like it is that I don't give a hoot about commissions. Well, I do. There's one thing, though, I haven't decided. One important thing. Well, what's that? I don't know what to do with Green Oaks. Oh, Jeff, I thought you'd live here. You've been here a week, and I, I just... Oh, you mustn't go, Jeff. Why, Sally, does my going mean that much to you? I thought I might arrange to keep the house open and come back for short visits from time to time. Oh, I don't believe you'd ever find anyone to look after Green Oaks. Not like Sam and I have cared for it. Well, what's wrong with you and Sam and possibly a housekeeper continuing to look after the place? No. No, you'll have to count me out this time. Then you were just fixing it up to sell it. You are disappointed about losing the sale. Listen, Jeff. I never did want Green Oaks sold, and I don't want it sold now. Come out on the terrace, and maybe I can explain why. Come on. Do you know, Sally, you are a very, very puzzling young lady. Please, Jeff. You've treated me like a little girl long enough. After all, you're only five years older than me. But I can't help it, Sally. You're still little Sally Randolph with the pigtails. Come on, start explaining. I'm sorry. I've changed my mind about explaining things. You'll have to figure it out yourself. Now, you see what I mean? You're the same unpredictable little girl. Now, how about dinner here on the terrace tonight? I'm returning to New York tomorrow. We'll settle everything. Dinner at seven. It's a deal. Sure is nice to be serving dinner out here. Makes me feel like old times. Miss Sally, you sure look scrumptious. Why, thank you, Sam. Yes. Bring the coffee up to the summer house, Sam. Come on, Sally. My, you've been awfully quiet tonight, Jeff. Is it because I didn't wear my pigtails? I've been an awful fool, Sally. It took an evening dress to make me realize you've grown up. Why, of course I've grown up. I've been working dreadfully hard at grown up for a long time. 
Now, here we are. Let's sit here where we can look down at the house. Sally, I'm going to tell you why you didn't want me to sell Green Oaks. And you found out, Jeff? You know? Yes, I found out. I found out a lot of things in the last week. The first thing I found out is that you don't find it easy to part with things you love. And I do love Green Oaks. Possibly not as much as you do, but I love it. Then why don't you stay here? Maybe I will. It all depends. You see, Green Oaks doesn't mean much unless you are around. I don't believe you found out anything. Oh, yes, I have. I found out that you're lovely, that you've grown up. And I found out why you don't want me to sell Green Oaks. Why, Jeff? Because you can't bear the thought of any other woman living in Green Oaks. Is that right? Jeff Carter, you're trying to make me admit that I'm head over heels in love with you. Is that such a difficult thing to admit, darling? Yes, it is. Especially when you don't think enough of me to... I've found out one other thing. The most important of all, Sally Randolph, I found out that I love you. Well, I love you even more than you love Green Oaks. Oh, it took you a million years to find it out, Slowpoke. I think I knew it ten years ago when you really were a little girl in pigtail. Oh, Jeff. I've dreamed of this all my life. Here's your coffee. In as hot as it would have been on the terrace. Sam? I want you to be the first to know you're serving the new mistress of Green Oaks. <laughs> Shucks. You ain't telling me no news, Mr. Jeff. Me and Miss Sally known about it more than two years. What do you think we've been fixing up for? This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our proudly we hailed story starring Zachary Scott. Before leaving you, Don Forbes has an important message from your War Department for all of us. Recently, the Army has been undertaking the job of converting from a wartime to a peacetime army. Many people think this means demobilization, retaining only a skeleton token armed force in uniform. No impression could be more erroneous. By July 1947, we will need an army of 1,070,000 trained soldiers to execute the various tasks that fall to a victorious nation. At present, we have nearly a million volunteers in the uniform of the regular army. But there are still men in the army with a commendable record of long and arduous service who will be deservingly released in the months to come. Today, our army is continuing its ever-increasing program of scientific research and development. Every day, Army technicians are making new discoveries in the utilization of radar to forecast weather, the development of automatically controlled aircraft and others, which benefit not only the scientific advancement, but the progress of the world. Now, is it just men we want in the Army? Any man? Emphatically not. We want intelligent ones, men of vision, who are willing to learn and be trained in a technical skill or trade, who want to have a productive career for themselves. In this age of electronics, jet propulsion, and medical advancement, we cannot afford to fall behind in scientific development. The Army and the trained technicians in it are unceasingly working, experimenting, studying to keep up with and to step ahead of scientific progress. That is the type of man we want, one who is anxious to be a member of a forward organization such as this. I need not go too deeply into the advantages to the individual men of a regular Army enlistment. The new unprecedented pay scale is above average, even to the man who is just starting his training. How many men can start out in their profession at a salary of $3,000 per year, taking into consideration food, clothing, lodging, medical care, and other expenses? The new regular Army soldier starts at an overall pay as high as that, and $3,000 is just a starting figure. If you are interested in a well-paying career and want more information about the advantages offered, Go to your local Army recruiting station today. Thank you, Zachary Scott, for appearing on this program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in. <laughs>